Hello and welcome to Teaching Bio. Today we're going to look at water. So the specification is quite concise as what you need to know about water. So it's worthwhile just making a note of this um, now and then we'll look at each of these components in more detail. So pause the video and copy these down. Okay, so to begin with you need to understand um, what water is and water is in fact dipolar. Now, you don't really know much detail about this but it sort of helps you to understand why water is dipolar and how it can undergo hydrogen bonding. So a dipole is defined as the separation of opposite charges and if you do A-level chemistry you'll probably, you will, you will learn this. So despite having no overall charge, the oxygen atom has a slightly negative charge. It's got a negative dipole which is given by this symbol here, the delta symbol. So this is delta negative and the hydrogen atoms have a slight positive charge so they're delta positive. So the oxygen atom, it's going to pull electrons from the hydrogen towards itself because it's more electronegative. And that's what makes it slightly negative on these sides. And that's what makes the hydrogen slightly positive. So the dipole movement is that way. And because of this, it's dipolar, or it says to be polarised. Dipolar, two dipoles. Okay, now water has two lone pairs, as well as two that are bonded to. Now, from GCSE, you probably know this, the dot and cross diagram of water. Now, it's these two lone pairs, coupled with the dipolar, the, the dipolar nature of water, that allows them to go hydrogen bonding. So, the positive dipole and the hydrogen atom, so here, forms a hydrogen bond with the, the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom. So, here's an oxygen atom. And if another hydrogen was to come along, it would hydrogen bond here. The hydrogen would hydrogen bond to the lone pair. Okay, hydrogen bonding, so it's from the hydrogen to the oxygen lone pair. Now, hydrogen bond itself is actually really weak, but it's the accumulative effect of lots of hydrogen bond bonds that give water its properties. And thus water molecules can cohere with one another, which basically just means they stick together by hydrogen bonding. And this forms the basis of the cohesion tension theory and the movement of water up xylem vessels. So this allows them to be pulled up by xylem vessels and that's known as capillary action. Now cohesion tension theory is something that we'll look at again when we look at mass transporting water. So straws and plants, this idea of water moving up and pressure. So when we're sort of sucking on a straw we create a partial vacuum in our mouths and the column here it's, it's sort of an unbroken continuous water column and the water in here is pushed upwards by atmospheric, atmospheric pressure which pulls downwards and it's the cohesion between the water molecules that prevents the column from breaking and this means that the water can travel up to our mouth against gravity because of the atmospheric pressure. This is useful for plants as when water travels up the xylem it maintains this continuous unbroken column. So, if we look at cohesion and capillary action in a bit more detail, cohesion between water molecules provides a surface tension strong enough to support small organs, for example, pond skaters. So, pond skaters, as the name suggests, can skate over ponds because of the high surface tension at the surface of water. Cohesion combined with adhesion to the walls of a thin, for example, the xylem vessels in plants, allows for the movement of water up the tube against gravity, and that's capillary action. So cohesion is the sticking of water together, or two substances together, and adhesion is the sticking of one substance to another substance that is not itself. So in this case, water molecules adhere to the cellulose cell walls. Equally with here, with um, tubes, water molecules again adhere to the thin walls on the side of the tubes, of the capillary tube. So water has a high specific heat capacity. And this is because the molecules are so strongly cohesive because of the accumulative effect of the hydrogen bonding that you need a lot of energy to separate them because of the hydrogen bonding. Now water also has a large latent heat of vaporization and this is because the hydrogen bonds in your water molecules mean that a lot of energy is required to evaporate a certain given mass of water and that energy is called the latent heat of vaporization. And when mammals sweat, water uses the thermal energy from the surface of the animal to change state from liquid to a gas and evaporate, and that helps to cool animals down. 
water also acts as a universal solvent because of the fact that it's polar. And so because it's polar, it readily dissolves in other substances, for example, gases and also wastes. Water is a metabolite because it's used in many metabolic reactions, for example, hydrolysis. So we can break down molecules by hydrolysis by adding water. And again, a lot of chemical reactions take place in aqueous mediums. And of course, it's a major reactant in photosynthesis. Now, solid ice is also less, dan less dense than liquid form. This is why icebergs flow on water or why ice cubes flow on the surface of your drink. And this is because of hydrogen bonding holding water molecules in an open lattice structure. So this is the open lattice structure and as you can see they sort of hold them, hold the oxygen molecules, the water and oxygen molecules quite far apart. The open lattice structure causes each water molecule to be held away from its neighbouring molecules at a distance equal to the length of the hydrogen bonds. So can you see they're held quite far apart away from each other and that's what gives them this open lattice structure. Now, in terms of the application of biology, obviously you've got the idea of um, icebergs floating on water, and that helps provide a habitat, for example, polar bears, and also it's quite a good insulator. And also you have animals that can actually dig um, in snow caves for hibernation during winter because it's a good insulator. Okay, so to summarise everything, this is sort of... Um, the mark scheme that AQA have released for questions relating to water and it's worth memorizing these sort of pairs of summaries so it's polar so it dissolves charged particles metabolite volume metabolic reactions they stick together cohesion prevent provides surface tension and prevents columns of water breaking high speed capacity reduces fluctuations or fluctuations in temperature um, large or high latent heat evaporation, evaporation of small amount of water cools organisms. So we've sort of explored each of these points in more detail. Okay, so pause the video and have a go at the following summary questions. The answers will follow. Okay, the answers are... Okay, pause the video and have a go at the following exam question. The mark scheme will follow. Okay, um, here's another exam question to try as well, and the mark scheme for both of these will follow after that. Okay, here's the mark scheme for exam question one. As you can see again, it's this idea of them just being paired and just learning those pairs of statements. Um, this is interesting, polar molecules, so actually the solvent, so metabolic reactions are faster, will give you all three marks if they asked what are the properties of water. Okay, so this is the mark scheme for the second exam question. Again, it's the idea of insulation and providing a habitat which we discussed, and the cooling of organisms. Okay, so um, next is a challenge question. Blood plasma is the fluid part of the blood. Plasmapheresis is a medical therapy that involves blood plasma extraction. One way to separate blood plasma is manually through suction cups. The cups stick on the surface of exposed skin and suck up blood. Use your knowledge of water to explain how blood plasma is removed. So pause the video and have a go at this challenge question. Okay, so the answer is as follows. So the suction cups stick onto the skin, so that's adhesion. Blood plasma salt behaves like water because it's this fluid part of the blood, and it's the plasma molecules that bond or bind to the cups by adhesion. And then we have capillary action moving the plasma molecules up the cup into the machine, the plasma, the plasmapheresis machine, and we have cohesion between these plasma molecules that allow plasma to move up. Again, these are ideas that we've already discussed before, cohesion tension theory, hydrogen bonding cohesion, and you also get negative pressure in the crop. So, so you can have any three of these in order to get um, the three marks of the question. Okay, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.